Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, climate warriors, echo champions, stewards of the earth. I address this August chamber with a resolve for our country to build back better from the twin crisis of the impacts from climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic, which our country and fellow Filipinos continue to experience these past few years. Our national government has poured in the funds for the recovery of our economy and the welfare of more than 100 million Filipinos, whose lives, as we know, have been forever altered by this pandemic. However, it is not enough that we only look at the horizon. As we pull ourselves up from this pandemic, we must also put in the forefront of our collective awareness how we should deal with the graver and irreversible impacts of the climate crisis. We are obviously living in challenging times of climatic changes that are unparalleled over thousands to millions of years. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, in its sixth assessment report, has warned us that today's temperatures are at the highest in 125,000 years. We are now at the point of no return in our battle against climate change. The report also tells us that with absolute certainty that the human factor in climate change is unequivocal. If we fail to heed the science and address the causes of climate change, there would be dire consequences on our society and our ecosystems. The Global Commission on Adaptation, the GCA flagship study, also asserts that by year 2030, more than 100 million people in developing nations will live below the poverty line, resulting from the impacts of climate change. Extreme weather events will continue to wreak havoc and delay progress. Extreme heat will continue to affect food security and water supply. Issues raised in the state of the nation yesterday. Rising sea levels, also stated by the president, will force coastal communities to seek shelter elsewhere. Over more than 1,600 communities, cities all over the country, more than 800 are coastal in nature. More troubling is that the Philippines ranked fourth of countries most affected by long-term climate change according to the 2021 Global Risk Index. And this is all the more reason for us to accelerate our efforts in climate action, paralleling our fight with this pandemic. The intricate interrelationships between the environment, our health, and the climate crisis cannot be understated. We must ensure that our actions now work towards a Philippines that is not only resilient to pandemic shocks, but also from extreme weather events and slow onset climate events. We have to rebuild our communities in such a way that we are also able to reduce our climate and health risks and vulnerabilities. I urge the national government and every Filipino to contribute to the staging of a resilient and sustainable pandemic and climate recovery. Kailangan magtulong-tulong, magkaisa sa pagsulong ng pagbabago tungo sa pagpapaunlad ng kalidad ng ating pamumuhay mula sa pandemya at sa kinakaharap din nating krisis sa klima. Only through a climate pathway can we truly recover in a resilient and sustainable manner. As concluded in the Paris Agreement, all countries must commit to limiting global warming by 1.5 degrees Celsius. In order to achieve this, a net zero global economy must be targeted worldwide by reducing greenhouse gases emissions by 45% by 2030 or by 7.6% every year from 2020 to 2030 to reach net zero by 2050. We are committed to this through the nationally determined contribution which intends to avoid and cut emissions to 75% by 2030 and to modernize our carbon intensive sectors on agriculture, waste, industry, transport and energy. We believe that a climate resilient development is the right path to improving the lives of our vulnerable population while also unlocking our potential for green and sustainable growth, supporting and advancing renewable energy and energy efficiency, 
environment-friendly transport systems, nature-based solutions, especially for adaptation, resilient buildings, infrastructure, moving away from single-use plastics in favor of extended responsibility of plastic producers, a truly circular economy, are initiatives consistent with this pathway, while we continue to unlock climate financing from global and multilateral sources, we need to enjoin the private sector to assist and invest in projects and programs in line with our country's sustainability and resilience goals.